kitchen and today we're going to be cooking on cast iron over a Swedish torch. So first thing you're going to need is a chainsaw or you know, it's not before. Uh, Swedish torch, it's going to take several cuts. You eight for six, depends on the size of the log. They're going to burn for a long time. something that's going to burn for a little bit, you can use newspaper and try it that way. The easiest thing to do is fire starters. Just light it up. And we'll give it a few minutes to catch. It's going to burn slowly from the inside and come straight up and we're going to the cast iron right on top of it. It's to cut some bacon or buy some bacon. If you want to see how to make bacon, check out my video. I'll put it in the info box above. This is an all made bacon we have, so I'm going to slice it pretty thin around, oh, I'd say three to four millimeters. So, something like that is good. And, um, you're going to need at least a piece to wrap each piece of chicken you're going to use. You can use chicken tenderloins, we use, um, we're using whatever we have tonight. It doesn't matter, we'll check that out next. But yeah, so first step is get the bacon sliced and ready. And we're using boneless, skinless thigh portions. Chicken tenderloins work great too. Uh, we want to marinate it however you want really. What we did is pretty much a yogurt marinade with uh, cream of spice and marinade how you like. You can use yogurt that helps to uh, break down the proteins in the chicken and make it more tender. You added a bit of apple cider vinegar, just whatever you like. And then you're going to just cut it into equal pieces, more or less, that are going to fit to the size of your sage. It's springtime here, so our sage plant is not making really big leaves. Normally I'd just use one big leaf, but in this case we'll just cut up, cut into pieces about the same size, more or less. And I'll just do one for a quick example. Take a piece of bacon. On just one side you're going to place the sage leaves between the bacon and the chicken. And then just wrap it up. There it is, and it's done. So we're going to just finish this now with the rest of the chicken. Well, the chicken was being prepared. Here's the Swedish torch. After for about 10 minutes or so. And see it's burning from the inside. It's going to continue to burn for a long time. It works like a rocket stove. The top is going to get really hot. Once it burns down a little bit more, you don't have to put it in a grate like this. Just I thought it'd be easier to hold the cast iron. Uh, you can set your skillet right on top of it. I'm gonna let it, the insides get nice and burnt so it starts, it's gonna burn very slow from the inside if you're not familiar with the Swedish torch. And we're gonna just set the skillet right on top and cook on top of it like that. So after you've prepared the chicken, wrapped it with the bacon and the sage, I put it sage side down into the skillet. And since we're using bacon, I'm not going to actually preheat it. I'm going to throw it 
directly onto the fire like this. So after 20 minutes or so, uh, this thing's gonna burn forever, like I said. Once it's good and lit, it's ready. I just have to scale it right onto it. And what I did was the smaller pieces I put around the edges and just keep an eye on it. Um, normally you can preheat it this way, but since I'm using bacon, I'm gonna start it off cold. And we're gonna check back on this in about 15 minutes. And maybe a minute into it, it's already sizzling. That means this thing is really hot. So we gotta keep an eye on it. We wanna kind of just brown the bacon on the first side. Yeah, and move it around a bit to the edges. The middle pieces, and then eventually we're gonna flip it. Ideally, the bacon will kind of constrict around the meat, and stay in place. That's the plan, anyway. Then, yeah, uh, if it's cooking this hot, we're gonna flip it after a couple minutes. So it's looking about done now. Time to pull it off the grill. You gotta keep an eye on the temperature. You might have to tilt the pan a bit if it's not sitting level like mine. And just keep an eye on them, turn them frequently when it's really hot. Make sure it's cooked all the way through and ready to eat. Okay, so all finished up. Serving it with some homemade coleslaw and toast. And let's cut into one and give it a try. Good, now I'm ready to demolish the plate. <laughs>